into their 30s. They finna find out what life is really about, what it's really like, what it really, really, really means, what's really going on. So, I have broken it down to the pathway that's available for me. What, what options do I have? What, what's available? What resources do I have? Because one of my last stories was about uh, the widow having to pay the tax man to save her son from being sold into slavery to pay the taxes and the profit coming into town. And she fixing him something to eat first and the oil that didn't stop pouring until all the jars were full. And then the prophet told the widow, now go out and sell the oil. And she had enough after selling the oil to pay the taxes and live off of. Yep. Sales. That's always the answer. Anytime anybody says, I want to start a business. What you're talking about doing is you're going to sell something. Oh, it's sales, baby. It's going to be sales. The question is what and how. That's what you got to figure out. Because that's why if you don't figure that out, you end up just being self-employed. Okay? What you're going to be is a person who creates jobs for yourself, who creates work for yourself. You go out, you'll do interviews, if you would, really. You'll call them sales, you call them solicitations, you call them bids, what have you. You'll get the work and then you do all the work yourself. <laughs> you know, you know that, that's a variation, a more innovative way of the I will work for food sign at the intersection guy. We'll work for food. He's selling his label. He's got it very clear what he's selling and what he want. The price, food. What he's going to give, work. That's the value he's going to exchange. Okay? That's what you end up doing. Okay. But now, one guy goes, he goes to the newspaper and says, how much for 200 newspapers, Sunday papers? Okay? He takes his money that he got begging, goes and buys 200 newspapers, okay? And then gets sales. Other people are standing on the street corner selling newspaper to make money. What has he done? He just created a business. Why? Because he's got other people working for him. He saves his money up again, gets more paper. And you know how the rest of the story ends. The man ends up having his own vehicle, his own truck. He eventually has several trucks. He ends up having a route. Why? He ends up having hundreds of routes throughout the state and other states. Why? He ended up doing the distribution business. Why? Because he understood sales. What did he start off doing? Selling the newspapers, okay? Well, he started off, we'll work for food. So you do start with yourself. Okay, but then he did what? Train other people, because what happened? Well, other people asked, hey man, I like what you're doing better. I'm begging on the street corner too. Why don't we work together? Instead of us just begging individually on the street corner, let us sell something, let us provide value. Okay, and people will shoo shoo and poo poo this speech and say, oh no, 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 why shouldn't you just give beggars money. Well, I'm not asking what I'm doing. But I'm knocking the people who are begging. What I'm saying is that that person, that that guy, that's a real person who actually did that. Who actually was on the street corner and then just made up his mind what it is he wanted. Made a decision and said, look, hold on, I can do better. See, I know the streets. See, what happened is he saw the same people every day out there begging. That same people ever, the same cars, the same people. So they got to where they knew him. They saw him every day. And then what happened? There were some people who regularly gave him money for nothing. Okay? 
And guess what? He simply appreciated that. He simply said, had enough sense to say, thank you. All right? And appreciate what they did. Because those regular people, those regular customers, who every single day would stop, hold out their hand, and here goes some change. Okay? Because he was there at that same spot every day. So that was sparked him in his heart. He was moved by the generosity of the people to say, you know what? These people are good to me. I believe if I provide some value back to them for that same change. In other words, he literally said, I'm no longer going to take the money from them without giving them something back. Do you get it now? Does, now, does that make sense? Can you see it differently? Are you, can you now look on the other side of the coin? That the person simply said, I've been getting money for them and giving nothing back. I will change that. Now, in exchange for what they've given me, I will give them something in return. Woo! See, I had you. I know. <laughs> Peter being hard. Fuck out there begging Pete. They trying to, trying to do their thing, man. Come on. How can you be hard before they down? No, 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 no. So you were going in the wrong direction. Now I brought you back. See, it's all about value. In other words, if you're giving value, you ain't begging. I never get somebody to say that. They, someone once said they'll never do sales because it's too much like begging. I said, oh, ain't that something? Well, I knew what that meant. See, when someone says that, that's the lame man who Jesus know he can't heal. Because that man has no faith. Jesus, Jesus knew there were some people he could not heal. See, that, that, that was the, the rich young ruler, the rich young prince, who said, yeah, I, I do the Ten Commandments. But when told to sell all his wealth and give it to the poor, <laughs> he heard his head and I said, well, I guess I ain't making it into heaven. And Jesus said, it is easy for a camel to walk through the eye of a needle. Therefore, the rich into the kingdom of God. Mm. Because he saw the man's heart, how the man literally turned away the opportunity for eternal life. Knowing that, had he, because the rest of the scripture says, <laughs> that man would have gained tenfold. Whatever any man who comes follows me, gives up his house, his wife, his children, and follows me, will gain tenfold. Huh. That's what Jesus said. Oh, that's the one who's sending straight away in the heavens, coming back again. Okay, all right, I don't want to preach. So, whenever you talk about sales, what you have to do is change yourself. See, what you're really doing, if you're still thinking sales is too much like begging whoever that person was, you are like the rich young ruler who would never enter the kingdom of God. Because what you just said is you won't give value when that's the only way you can. You can gain tenfold if you're simply willing to give more value than what you take. Okay? If you can do that, change your whole entire life. It is sales at the core foundation. Whenever you say you want to make money, it's about sales. Just that simple. So... Good morning. I've literally been out here walking as the sun has risen. Over the course of this video, you can look in the background and see how it's going from dark to light. Because see, this is the time to get up in the morning. This is how to meet your day. This, let God wake you up at four o'clock in the morning. Read something motivational. Read your, take your time to read your Wall Street Journal. Okay, when it's still quiet. Get on your knees, pray, meditate at four in the morning, okay? Take your time. Get your exercise in. Work on yourself. Because see, this is the foundational principle that I give to people. See, I work on changing me. Because see, when I change me, I know everything else is going to change. As Les Brown says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy without can do me no harm. So I got to change me. I work on me, change me who I am. Growth. 
on the job. My boss told me something yesterday. Nobody has lasted two years in a position that I'm in. No one before me. <laughs> For as long as he's been a human resource director, even before then, contract analysts, contracts, contract supervisor, they've even had different names for it. No one's lasted two years. I'm going into my second year. Most people never lasted a year. Okay? <laughs> never lasted a year. I'm about to go into my second. I'm about to make, I'm about to walk on in there. And see, now that's, that's a job. Okay? That's a training ground, that's a training field. Okay? I'm there to learn. All right? But now my business, that's what's in my heart. That's what I'm building, okay? Because I teach people something very important. People in sales, network marketing, different programs, and entrepreneurship, where there's programs of entrepreneurship. You know, that's what they are. There's programs of entrepreneurship. That's what, uh, you know, different real estate programs, Grant, Card Grant Cardone, Jay Morrison, Jay Massey. You know, these people, they have entrepreneurial programs. You know, that they train and teach you how to make money. So in real estate, being an entrepreneur, okay? Even though there's really five basic systems, okay? But they teach it to you as entrepreneur programs, okay? And they'll sometimes, they'll say, you know, that, well, a job stands for just over broke. You know, which it does. But a job also means... <laughs> that you take care of your bills, okay? Jump on them bills, all right? J-O-T-B, jump on them bills, all right? See when, you, cause see, when you have kids, the baby, they gotta have food in there. They got a light bill in there. You know, Robert Kiyosaki, I love his story, wonderful, beautiful, but one thing you gotta understand, he and his wife never had the kids. So when, when they lived in a van for three months, then when their friends found out about them living in the van or in the car for three months, they let them stay in their basement. They stayed in the basement for six months. They were homeless for over a year. Why can't they have no kids? Because see, if you're living in a car for three months, okay, and you got little kids, it's some folks that come, come they, they gonna come take them kids. You're gonna lose your kids. So you gotta have a job. But let's say you also got a dream on your own business. How do you do that? Okay. You live below your means, you save your money up, but then guess what you gotta do? You gotta work on yourself. Okay. And you gotta learn, and then that work on yourself part, the changing of yourself, that's where you do sales. That's where you change yourself. That's where you get to understand that you gotta have a business. Cause see, that's what roots you in the discipline. Cause see, if you go out there and jump out there and run, get a business, ain't never, <laughs> been trained. That's the equivalent. Literally, I'm sorry it is, of saying, I'm going to get out here. Never ran a race. I'm going to go out and get in the marathon. 26 miles. But what you need to barely be doing is getting out in a 1K and work your way up to a 3K, then a 5K, then a 10K. Do some of them first. Okay, before you jump out and do a marathon. Okay? That's the mistake that people make. So I'm gonna jump out here, leave my government job, take all my retirement money, pour it into a business, and never, ever been in business before. Never been in sales, never been tested. And that's what real Robert K. Saki talks about. That's doing to rich dad, poor dad. Cause he's talking about his poor dad, eventually opened up a Baskin Robbins, a franchise that he thought, and he poured all his retirement money into. But he just didn't have the business. He had never done, he had been educated. He had, he had been getting a government check his whole entire life and thought he was going to retire from a government check that came every 1st and 15th. He thought he was going to do that and then open up a business, a franchise, and make it. I mean, you can, but it's a crash course, man. Woo-wee. It's like a crash diet. So I teach people sales, you mean, because that's your training field. That's where you get tough, okay? 
Uh, David Goggins, wonderful motivational speaker. The only guy to do, went through three Navy SEAL Hell Week, one year, was uh, did Navy SEAL on Bud School, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, not Green Beret, whatever, and Air Force Survival School, okay, back to back to back, okay, yeah. He talks about being 300 pounds. And what he did, in other words, he got in shape first before he went to the Navy. <laughs> he didn't just jump in the Navy SEAL to 300 pounds. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do that. <laughs> no. He talks about how hard it was even after he first got in shape. He lost the 300, made weight. He just did make weight, then got in. But at least he went and made weight. So you got to get tough enough first. Because elsewise, your experience would be like David Goggins. Because it's like, well, why did he do three? Three times and sit well, because he kept getting injured, kept getting sick, shin splints. Body couldn't take it. He wasn't in shape. He got recycled, put out, had to come back. <laughs> Start over again. Three times. That's called never quitting. That's never quitting. He never, in other words, he never rang the bell. Okay. But he, the principle is, he got in shape first. He got tough first. He got tough first mentally. Okay? And you got to do something. It's, it's a process. That's a process. Sharpening that tool. As he said, put a callus on his mind. Okay? That's what that is, that is about. That's what you got to do. That's why sales is important because that, that's going to be the fundamentals of business is learning sales. Because, see, that's where you get to learn and meet customers, people. Who's going to buy the product? Who are you going to deal with? I trip on attorneys. Young attorneys think they're going to jump out there. They learn, they just barely learn how to try a case. Then they want to open up a law practice. God, uh, ain't learn no marketing. We don't know where the customers going to come from. They think people just going to come. I guess because just, they good people. They nice, you know. Word, word of mouth. Boy, you're going to start to death on that word of mouth because folks just ain't gonna have the money. You better learn how to get some people in. You better learn sales. You better learn how to do some lead generation. You better learn how to prospect. You better learn how to talk to other attorneys and get some association agreements signed so they can send you some cases. Get you something in paper. Get you something in writing. Don't just come in and talk to someone and say, I need some work. Man, don't, be, don't do that. Man, get something in writing. So you gotta understand what your money gonna look like, what you working for. Don't make that rookie mistake. See, now I'm gonna finish up with this. Everybody got a dream, but too many folks stay asleep. Okay? You gotta get up out the bed. If you wanna make it real, you gotta get up out the bed. I'm sorry. So, for me, what it's about is I'm doing the David Goggins thing. I'm toughening up my mind, I'm getting that callus on my mind. Uh, I'm ready, willing, able to train people. It's about making them phone calls, making them contacts, texting folk, you know, getting rejection, which is the core and key center of sales. It's about reprogramming your brain on what rejection is in business when you do business sales and you get rejection. Because I promise it's impossible to fail in sales. It's impossible to fail in business. You get used to rejection. If you reprocess what rejection means, if you take rejection and reprogram your brain on what rejection means, okay? Because see, what they found out, scientists have done a study, is that the experience of being rejected in business, approaching someone for a potential prospect, preparing for uh, practicing your sales presentation, doing the presentation, and facing rejection, maybe even being told some kind of rough, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's some bad experiences in sales. I, I want, and I hope people send me some stories of how funky some people, some potential clients have gotten with them. Went on a sales call, came in folk house, sat down, did a presentation, and folks folk done heard some funky stuff. Okay, scientists have found that that experience of that rejection in the brain, the brain patterns, the effect emotionally, psychologically it's pretty much the same a 
as being actually physically wounded, as being shot, okay? Like being shot, that what happens to your blood pressure and all that type of stuff. Heart rate. It's like you, like someone physically walked up to you and put a gun to your head and pulled the trigger. That's A. B, it emotionally, it's like the loss of a close loved one, okay? A child or a mother, father, sibling, okay? That is the emotional experience of rejection. But, <laughs> but, and but meaning wipe out everything before, take everything I just said and throw it in the garbage. This is a but. But for those people, when they tested, successful salespeople, when they faced rejection, there was no indication of any change whatsoever. Same rejection had no effect. Zero, none. In fact, the most successful salespeople actually redirected the energy and they put themselves into a higher state afterwards. A, there was no effect at all whatsoever. The rejection, it was as if nothing happened at all. Okay? But then B, afterwards, they put themselves in the state as if the, as if the prospect had said yes. Woo! So what is the difference between the inexperienced person in business and the experienced person with sales experience? They got a callus on their mind. There's no effect. Superman, man of steel, the bullet hits and bounces off. They shot, no effect. Thank you.